there, a double dose of Ryan Priest was the easy cure, and Lafayette fought its way back. The senior running back from Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, was the heart of the Lafayette attack. And as in his previous three years, he wore the burden of leadership proudly on his broad shoulder. A preseason All-American pick, Priest had over 140 yards in the day and was running strong. for the fourth quarter crunch, the unthinkable. All the prayers of all his fans couldn't negate the knee injury. Victory with inside a moment ago proved as elusive as a scrambling quarterback. And success, there for the taking, eluded the outstretched grasp of the Leopards by inches. Crowd sat stunned as Lafayette was measured for defeat, and in the gloom of the moment, fans and players could not be consoled. But the Leopards rebounded, recording convincing wins over Columbia and Cornell before returning to Fisher Field for the big homecoming clash with James Madison. Freshman quarterback Frank Bauer took over the controls and in that opening drive laid waste to the notion of playing it close to the best. His confident, cool under fire breathed life into the passing game. Bauer would settle into his role of field general with an easy confidence. Russo explained it this way. On that opening drive, we had a fourth and goal at the one. And I called the timeout and called Frank over and asked him what he thought we should do. I was trying to loosen him up a little bit. With a gleam in his eye, he said, how about a punt, coach? Lafayette defense was on a roll, having registered a shutout over the last eight quarters, and the Leopards kept constant pressure on ball carriers, quarterbacks, and receivers. The Dukes could run, but there was nowhere to hide. Bruce McIntyre was hot off a 200-yard rushing performance against Cornell, the first back in history to ever do so. And behind the domination blocking of a fired-up offensive line, 
the Big Mac attack pounded JMU for 130 yards. Thatcher, Clark, Gilbertson, Dunbar, Horn, and center Joe Gaziano sacrificed body, soul, and visibility to toil in the trenches. A 22-yard field goal by junior Mike Renzi increased the lead. The quarter changed, but the game plan stayed the same. Cleared for takeoff, the awakening Lafayette offense took wing, and it was full throttle ahead. Second Renzi field goal up the count to 20 to 6. A safety lives by intuition and an affinity for the ball. And in the closing minutes, senior Dave Rankin showed why and how. Them victories after that heartbreaking loss to Colgate, Lafayette had turned question marks into exclamation points and raised the record to four and one. games later, the Leopards hobbled back to Fisher Field. A rash of injuries had left them vulnerable to ambush, and the maroon and white faithful had cause for concern. Losses to Navy and Rhode Island hurt mind and body. The Leopards could find no heroes in that nightmare stretch, but with the opening kickoff against Bucknell, the ball hawkers of the Lafayette bomb squad served notice. The most dangerous cat is a wounded one. Faithful followers sobered by the results of recent weeks once again would find reason to smile. <laughs>
33-yard scoring play followed by Renzi's successful try enabled the Leopards to draw first blood. All players were dressed and on the sideline for this one. Lafayette's football team coaches and players said, the time is now. The Lafayette defense anchored in. King, McCartney, Donnelly, Brantley, and Coffee up front. Gaziano, Anderson, Davis, and Brown at the linebacker. No matter what you call them, or in what order you named them, they kept coming at you. The price you would pay was inevitable like death and taxes. With the nerves of a daredevil and the eyes of a wide-angle camera, Frank Bauer devastated the Bucknell pass defense with pinpoint accuracy. Carl St. Bernard scored one of his seven touchdowns in the season and would also lead the team in receiving with 41 catches. Frank Gaziano was a factor sideline to sideline and would once again lead the Leopards in tackles for the season. The stickers in the secondary, Rankins, Joseph, Yannick, and number four, senior Bruce Dixon, brought to ground the rare buffalo that broke free, much to the delight of family and friends. When the noose tightened and the cats swooped in, the befuddled bisons were stopped stone cold. Meanwhile, Bauer had the Lafayette offense in high gear, a well-run machine lubricated with the oil of confidence. From the one, a great fake by Frosch running back Kurt Bowman enabled Bauer to tiptoe in around right in, unseen, untouched. Several rookies made it big in 1985, including Kurt Bowman, a 5'10", 180-pounder from Waynesburg, Pennsylvania. Subbing for an injured Bruce McIntyre, Bowman rushed for 450 yards in the season. Backups like senior flanker Burt Venner also keyed Lafayette's winning season. His touchdown here was one of his three in the last three games of the year. <laughs> Speaking of unsung heroes and playing position where the light rarely shines, Lafayette's offensive line deserved their time in the sun. The second half was a just reward for the rest of the Lafayette squad whose spirit and effort never wavered in this roller coaster ride to a winning season. Alumni and students alike could be proud. Another winning season was in hand. Down the field we swing in perfect trim behind the team we played to win and as we swing we sing the marching song. And the song we sing is on the theme of Lafayette and of her team we sing. Domination was capsuled eloquently on the scoreboard. And the final result was sweet icing on the cake, baked by the efforts of the whole Lafayette football family. While Lafayette and Colgate 
with the only two teams to post winning records in 1985. Next year, they will join Lehigh, Bucknell, Holy Cross, and Davidson to vie for the first ever Colonial League Championship. Join the Pards in 86. Climb aboard a winner. Fight!